All right. So here we've got a problem about good old JRandom troll dropping laptops off the roof of a building. So if he's dropping a laptop from rest, how far has it traveled after 3.2 seconds of falling? And how fast is it moving after 3.2 seconds of falling? One given that you have is that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared downward. So let's get started. I'm going to begin by drawing a picture of the scenario so that I can mark my axes, which direction is positive, which is negative, and just kind of orient myself for solving this problem. So here he is standing on top of the building, getting ready to drop the laptop, which will then move straight downward. I've started making a list of my knowns, and these are values that were just given in the problem. So I know my acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared in the downward direction, and the time that I'm going to deal with is 3.2 seconds. So what I've done here is assigned them to their particular variable, and I've included units with it as well. I'm also going to make a list of things that I don't know or things that I need. For example, I don't know what distance it's fallen, and I don't know how fast it's going to be moving after these 3.2 seconds. Now, on my picture, I'm going to set up a coordinate frame. I'm going to define what I want the zero position to be, and I'm also going to define which direction is positive and which is negative. So I've slapped a coordinate frame on here. I decided, since the laptop starts at the top of the building, that's what I'm going to define as my zero position. Because it's dropping downward, and the acceleration is downward, and everything else from this position is downward, I'm going to go ahead and declare the downward direction to be positive, and the upward direction to be negative. If you do it in an opposite way, that's totally fine, and you're going to get the right answer. I just like avoiding negative numbers because I'm a supremely lazy person. So based on my lists of knowns and unknowns, I'm going to pull some equations that I could possibly use. These are the three equations that I listed earlier in the lesson. I'm going to go through and mark which variables I know and which variables I don't know. I already know the value for the acceleration, that's 9.81. I know the value for the time, and that variable shows up twice. I know that d0 is 0 because I put 0 right on its starting position. I don't know what d is, and, uh-oh, oh, what's v0? What's my initial velocity? Huh. Okay, I'll come back to that in a second. In the velocity equation, I know time, I know acceleration, but I don't know my final velocity, and there's that pesky initial velocity again. Okay, let me look at the combo equation down here. I know my acceleration. Uh, I don't know the change in the distance. I don't know my final velocity. And once again, there's that pesky initial velocity. So let me go back and look at the problem real fast. Okay, J random troll is talking laptops on the roof. If he drops a laptop, oh, hold on, there it is. If he drops a laptop from rest. So this problem didn't explicitly state that the initial velocity is zero, but it's assumed that I know rest means zero meters per second to begin with. Ooh, okay. Well, that means I can update my list of knowns. The initial velocity is zero meters per second. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and add d naught on here as well. Because I placed the origin right on top of the laptop where he drops it, that means the initial starting position is simply a zero. So this means I now know v naught, and look at that. For the position equation and the velocity equation, I managed to line it up where I have only one unknown. So for this problem, I'm just not going to use the combo equation. So starting with part A, how far has it fallen? Far indicates some sort of a distance, so I'm going to hop to the distance equation for this one. One thing I highly recommend you do is avoid throwing in numbers until you've solved for your unknown variable. It'll make your life a lot easier if you make a mistake to go back and check it later. Now in this case, it's already solved for my unknown variable. D is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to slap in the values that I know. And there we have it. One thing I want to point out is that I put positive 9.81 in for the acceleration. The reason I chose positive 9.81 and not negative 9.81 was from back here, 
where I said downward is positive, and that happens to be the direction of the acceleration. If you were using a more traditional format where up is positive and down is negative, you would want to put in negative 9.81 into that spot. Well, zero plus anything, that doesn't add anything. Zero times 3.2 is just zero, so I can simplify this equation down a little bit. And just to make sure I haven't made any mistakes, I'm going to do a quick unit check. My distance is in meters, okay. Uh, meters per second squared times the second is getting squared, so my second squareds will cancel. Okay, great. I ended up in units of meters, so that's exactly where I need to be. I'm in good shape. So I'm just going to solve this out now. And when I round to proper sig figs, I get the distance being 50 meters. Cool. But that's not the only thing I was asked. Since I'm asked for a velocity, I'm going to use the velocity equation. Once again, it is already solved for my unknown variable, so I'm going to slot my values in here. Once again, doing a quick unit check, I've got meters per second squared times seconds, so I end up in units of meters per second. The zero doesn't really mean anything. And hey, units of meters per second, that's what I'm looking for. So solving and rounding for sig figs, I get around 31 meters per second. Whew, that laptop is booking it. Now, I got a positive 31 meters per second, and I got a positive 50 meters. So that tells me I've got a velocity of 31 meters per second in the downward direction, and the distance traveled is around 50 meters downward. And all of that makes sense. Awesome.